Hello friends, my name is Dr. Manjiri Ganjewar. I am assistant professor in department of anatomy in MGM Medical College, Aurangabad. Today we are going to see a demonstration of the organ called as a stomach in the abdomen. So first we will see the definition of the stomach. Stomach is a muscular virus bag of the digestive tract. It is also called as a gaster or venter. Now this stomach at upper end is attached to the lower end of the esophagus and at lower end it continues with the first part of duodenum. Now this stomach in the abdomen is located in the left upper part of abdomen. So in the abdominal quadrants it is located in the epigastric, left hypochondriac and epigastric region. Now the shape of the stomach it is J shape but it is depend upon the person's build. So in a normal active person it is somewhat J shape while in a thin hyposthenic person it is J shape and in a broad tall very active person it is almost horizontal. The length of the stomach is 25 centimeter in adults. If we go by the capacity of the stomach in newborn it is almost 30 ml in capacity at puberty it is 1 liter and in adults it is 1.5 to 2 liters. Then if we go by the external features we will see on the organ. Now we will start the demonstration of the stomach. This is the stomach. Now this stomach has two orifices, two curvatures, two surfaces and two ends as well as two parts. We will see one by one. The two orifices are the upper one called as a cardiac orifice. The lower one is called as a pyloric orifice. Now this cardiac orifice is lying at the level of left 7th coastal cartilage inside the body. If we go by the vertebral level, it lies at the level of T11 vertebra. This cardiac orifice has a sphincter which is called as a physiological sphincter which cannot be demonstrated anatomically. The pyloric sphincter, it lies at the level of lower border of L1 vertebra which is also called as a transpyloric plane. This pyloric sphincter can be demonstrated anatomically. It can be palpated as a thick muscular nodule. That's why this is an anatomical sphincter. Now, this through this sphincter, the stomach is connected to the first part of duodenum. This stomach has two surfaces. This surface is called as an antero superior surface while the one which is posterior will be called as a postero inferior surface. The stomach has two borders. This is the right border of the stomach which is concave and is also called as a lesser curvature. This lesser curvature gives attachment to the lesser omentum. The second border is convex and is also called as a left border. This border is also called as a greater curvature of the stomach. It gives attachment to the greater omentum, gastrosplenic ligament and gastrophrenic ligament. Stomach has two parts, cardiac part and pyloric part. Now this cardiac part is again divided into two parts, fundus and body. So this cardiac part, if we draw a line from cardiac orifice to the left border of the stomach, the above dome shaped part is called as a fundus. This fundus normally has a gas which can be demonstrated on the x-ray. Then the remaining part of the is called as a body which is very distensible. And this body part contains many gastric gland which are responsible for the gastric juice. Now the pyloric part which is divided again into two parts, pyloric canal and pyloric antrum. So this because of sulcus intermedius, this pylorus is divided into these two parts which can be demonstrated by a constriction present. This pyloric antrum is 7.5 cm long while this pyloric canal is 2.5 cm long. This pyloric constriction can be demonstrated by prepyloric vein and presence of constriction in the front. Now, after this, we will see the stomach relations. This stomach lies in the abdomen over some structures which forms the stomach bed. So these structures are diaphragm, left kidney, left suprarenal, pancreas, splenic flexure of colon, mesocolon and splenic artery. 
these structures are separated from the stomach by a cavity called as a lesser sac. Sometimes spleen can be seen in the stomach bed, but it is separated from the stomach by the greater sac. Now we will see the blood supply of the stomach, which is very important for the stomach. So the blood supply is along the borders of the stomach. So the lesser curvature is supplied by left gastric artery and right gastric artery. The left gastric artery is a branch of celiac trunk, while the right gastric artery is a branch of proper hepatic artery. Along the greater curvature, there are two arteries, left gastroepiploic, which is a branch of splenic artery, while right gastroepiploic, which is a branch of gastroduodenal artery. At the level of fundus, there are some short gastric arteries, which supply, they are also branch of splenic artery. The venous drainage of the stomach, right and left gastric veins, they are along the lesser curvature, and they drain into the portal vein, while right gastroepiploic is draining into the superior mesenteric vein and left gastroepiploic drains into the splenic vein. So this was the blood supply of the stomach. Now if we cut open the stomach along the greater curvature, we can see the mucosa of the stomach. This mucosa of the stomach in empty stomach is thrown into numerous mucosal folds. These are called as a gastric rugae. This mucosal fold disappear or they flatten out if the stomach is distanced with the food. Now along the lesser curvature, these mucosal folds, they are very regular and they form a gastric canal called as a megantras. The liquids which we swallow will follow rapidly along this megantras, so the gastric emptying time for the liquids is very fast. As this canal is very much exposed to the very every drink we uh, drink, so these are more prone for the ulcers. If we see by the hand lens, the mucosa, we can see some depressions on this gastric mucosa. These are called as a gastric pits. The gastric glands open into these gastric pits. Now let's see the functions of the stomach. The first and foremost important function of the stomach, that stomach act as a reservoir and mixer of the food. Secondly, because of peristaltic movements, it softens the food and mixes it with the gastric juice. Third function, that the gastric glands which are present in the stomach, they secrete the gastric juice which contains numerous enzymes which are responsible for the food digestion. Fourth function, this gastric gland also secrete hydrochloric acid which is responsible for destruction of microorganisms which are present in the food. Fifth function, the gastric mucosa also secretes copious amount of mucus which protects the gastric mucosa against the corrosive action of hydrochloric acid. The gastric glands also secrete intrinsic factor which is responsible for the absorption of the vitamin B12. So these are the functions of the stomach. The stomach as well as helps in absorption of some of the alcohol, drug, water. So this is the functions of stomach. Now let's see gastric emptying. Whenever the food enters the stomach, it is mixes with the gastric juice, the hydrochloric acid and mucus. This food remains into the stomach for almost 2 to 4 hours. This time is called as a gastric emptying time through which the stomach then empties into the, contains into the duodenum. Gastric emptying time depends upon number of factors. One of them is the composition and size of food, sex of the person and metabolic condition. If the person has any recent surgery, infections or metabolic derangements like diabetes mellitus, all these factors affects the gastric emptying time. Now for the applied part of the stomach, first we are going to see the gastric pain. As stomach is supplied by the spinal segments T6 to T11 which also supplies the upper part of the abdomen. So the pain of the stomach or gastric pain is felt in the epigastrium that is upper abdomen. Secondly, peptic ulcers, which are because of the hydrochloric acid action, they are most commonly found in the stomach, first part of duodenum and lower part of the esophagus. In the stomach, they are called as a gastric ulcers and they follow the lesser curvature. Third factor is called as a gastric carcinoma. This gastric carcinoma is mostly seen on the greater curvature. Because of the meds which are followed through thoracic duct, it follows into the left supraclavicular node which is called, also called as a troizer sign or the signal node which if palpable denotes the stomach carcinoma.